Satan, Santa Claus, and the God of Religion. So what do these three have in common? First, I think it's interesting to note that Satan and Santa are made up with the exact same letters. And what does Santa Claus do? Santa Claus goes around rewarding or giving gifts to children that are good or who act right. And he goes around, gives lumps of coal, or gives nothing to children who are bad, who don't act right. And that's really, essentially, what the God of religion does. The God of religion rewards those who make the right free will choice or come up with their own faith or act right. And he rewards them with salvation or heaven. But those that don't act right or don't have faith or don't make the right decisions, then they're punished for all eternity. So really, the God of religion is exactly like Santa Claus. And how does Satan fit into all this? Satan is a master imitator. He disguises himself as an angel of light and his minions as dispensers of righteousness. So they talk about, Satan talks about being good and being bad. Santa Claus talks about the human being good and bad. The God of religion talks about the human being good and bad. So it puts the behavior of and salvation based on the human so it's human behavior that earns salvation just like it earns Christmas gifts from Santa Claus and bad human behavior if you don't do the right thing that earns punishment or eternal damnation or annihilationism just like being a bad kid or not doing the right things earns you coal or no presence at all and that's what Satan wants to do. He wants humans to believe that they are in charge of whether they get to heaven and are with God or not. Satan wants humans to establish their own righteousness to say, I'm saved and going to heaven because I did this. That person's not saved and they're not going to heaven because they didn't do this, that, or the other. So that very thing that separates you from being saved and that person from not being saved is what you did to attain salvation or what you did to attain Jesus Christ. It's your own righteousness. And let's look, take a look at what Romans chapter 10 says here. This is the Apostle Paul speaking in verses 2 and 3. I'm starting here going down to verse 5. For I am testifying to them that they have a zeal of God, which means they're emotional and they're fired up for God, but not in accord with recognition. So they're not recognizing what's to follow here, which is, For they, being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own righteousness, were not subjected to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the consummation of the law for righteousness to everyone who is believing. So what Paul is saying here is that people are trying to establish their own righteousness to say why they deserve the salvation that comes from Jesus Christ. But that's not recognizing the truth. It's not in accord with recognition as Paul says here. What are they failing to recognize? They're failing to recognize the righteousness of God. And in doing so, they're establishing their own righteousness, just like Santa Claus and Satan want the person to establish their own righteousness. If you act good, if you do what you're supposed to be doing, you'll get the reward. If you don't do what you're supposed to be doing, you'll get the punishment. So whatever you do to earn the right thing, that's your own righteousness. It's on you, the human. But that's what Paul is rejecting here. We're not establishing our own righteousness. But instead, we're believing and accepting the righteousness of God. What is the righteousness of God? Well, in Romans 3.21, Paul explains, Yet now, apart from the law, so not doing the law, not obeying rules, that's not what we're talking about here, a righteousness of God is manifest being attested by the law and the prophets, yet a righteousness of God 
through Jesus Christ's faith for all and on all who are believing. There is no distinction for all sin and are wanting of the glory of God. So everybody's a sinner. We've all sinned. We've all inherited death through Adam and because of our death, because we're dying, we sin. So we're all in that same boat. So it's not about us establishing righteousness here. It's about accepting the righteousness of God, which is what Jesus Christ did. It's through Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ's faith and what he did through his death, entombment, and resurrection gives us that righteousness. That's God's righteousness. It's not like Santa Claus where he rewards the human for doing good or bad or Satan who is looking to establish humanity as their own savior by doing good or bad. That's the opposite of the truth. The truth is that we are saved and we are going home to be with God not because of us being good or bad but because of what Jesus Christ did. That's the righteousness of God. And we can't truly accept the righteousness of God until we understand that it's not up to us in any way, in any minuscule part, to save ourselves. But it's all up to what Jesus Christ did through his death, entombment, and resurrection. It's like drowning at the bottom of a pool. If you're at the bottom of a pool and you're unconscious and someone jumps into that pool, swims down to the bottom in the deep end, and drags you out of the pool, puts you on the deck, resuscitates you, and you live for the next 50 years because that person saved you. What did you do to be saved? You did nothing. You were at the bottom of the pool unconscious. The Savior jumped in and took you from start to finish and saved your life. Now. Ten days later, if you don't believe that that person jumped in the pool and saved you, or you don't act right, are you still saved by that person? Are you still alive? Yes, you are. And that's a big misunderstanding in Christianity. Jesus Christ saves us. Just as Adam gives us death by no choice of her own, Jesus Christ saves us by no choice of her own. It's up to Jesus Christ. And whether we believe him or act right or don't, we're still saved. Now, if we believe, then we have a special salvation. We'll, we're saved first and we're a complement to Christ to help the rest of the universe come in to understand the love, the death, the entombment, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But that faith comes from Jesus himself. He gives us that faith since the beginning of the world, since the foundation of the world, before we're even born. If you read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, it talks about how Jesus gave us this faith before the creation of the world. So yes, those that do have faith were given it by Christ, and they have a special salvation. 1 Timothy 4, 10 says that God is the Savior of all mankind, especially of believers. So believers do have a special salvation. However, that qualifies the rest as being saved. So we have a Savior that is right here and say, we're here. What Santa Claus, Satan, and the God of religion says is in order to get to what Jesus Christ did for you, you have to act a certain way, have faith on your own, and do all these things depending on the religion that you are a part of. They each have different rules. You have to keep moving towards Christ in order to get to him. The truth of scripture is, is that here we are, here Christ is. He comes and gets us. No matter what. It may take some longer than others. If he chooses you, then he gives you that faith. And you live the way you're destined to live. Whatever God chose you to do and be, 
he's going to come and get you. If he didn't choose you to believe since the foundation of the world, then he'll come and get you later. But it's all based on the death, entombment, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's not based on your behavior.